Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. We are continuing on our Matillion on top of Snowflake journey and building a warehouse using Matillion and following along with the tutorials that the Matillion Academy offers. In this short video, we're going to be using the S3 load generator component, which in practice is a combination of two separate components, the crate table and the S3 load component. We're going to read a compressed CSV file in from a public S3 bucket in an AWS account and CSV file that we're going to bring in, it contains data for flights and we're going to load it into the table as part of our source schema. So if you're following along at home, the first thing you need to do is we need to make sure we're in the DWH orchestration job we created earlier. If you missed those other videos, I'll stick a pop-up banner at the screen above next. And we need to go into components and we need to type in the S3 load generator component. That's this one here. So we'll drag that onto the canvas. And after doing that, we're presented with this wizard for the S3 load generator. And we need to provide the URL for the S3 storage. And I'm going to use this one here. If I expand that out, I can see I've got three files in there. I'm going to use the training S3 flights 2016 GZ file, which is this one here. Click OK. I need to select the compression type. In this case, it's gzip, and I can click get sample with a row limit specified, and that will give me a sample of the top 50 rows in that file. So if I click next, I can actually click guest schema at this button at the bottom right, left hand side. And what Matillion ETL will do, will it, it will try to infer the data types that's required for the destination table using those first 50 rows. So it'll make a best guess. I'm going to scroll down on this left hand side and just look at all of the configuration options I've got here. I'm going to tell it to treat empty fields as null. And you'll also find all the kind of common configuration items that you'd expect to get when working with CSV files. Click next. And I'm going to click create and run. And you can see there's our two components I mentioned earlier create table and the S3 load component. I'm going to join our start component to our create table component. So this orchestration job effectively will run these components in parallel. And if we click on the create table component, we're going to just look at some of the uh, properties here. First thing that we want to do, we probably want to update the name from its default and we're going to call it create training underscore flights click OK next we'll change the create slash replace property and we'll, we will actually tell it to replace the table if it exists so click OK now because we've only used the first 50 rows to infer the data types there's always that risk that Matillion couldn't guess the correct types for the whole data set so in this case we just need to fix the size of a, a few columns so if we expand the columns here, we're going to change the actual elapsed time to 10, as well as the air time to 10. Taxi in is 10, as is taxi out. We'll click OK on there. We'll select the create table component. Now we're going to modify the new table name property. And we're just going to call it training underscore flights. Click OK. And then we're going to right click on the create table component just to run that component only. So we can run the component itself or run from the component and start everything from there. We're just going to run that component on its own to make sure that works. So we can see that's run OK. It's created the table. We're going to click on the S3 load component next and we're going to update a couple of things here. First thing we're going to do is go down to the target table. You can see we've got a, an issue here. We're going to click that. And now we can pick our train and flights table that we've just created by running the previous component. Click OK. That then validates our component correctly. We can now right click on the canvas anywhere and run the job. And we'll expand this out so we can have a look at what's happening here. I can see we've got 1.42 million records which have been loaded into our target table. If we go to our environments on the bottom left and expand our environment that we're working with, expand our tables out, look at our train and flights, 
we can see our tables now in there and it's being created. And so that's it. That's how you load data from our CSV file located in our S3 public bucket using the S3 load component in Matillion. So next up as part of our creating a warehouse in Matillion on Snowflake, we need to do some data preparation. We're going to create some views. We're going to import a Matillion job. Essentially, it's a JSON file that's going to contain three different scripts, which all point to the train and flights table that we've just created. Those scripts are stored inside three different SQL script components, and the job itself will create three different views in the source schema after it's been executed. Those views essentially will be used as the input into a transformation job for creating the fact table for flight analysis that we'll do in our next lesson. Okay, so to import this job, I'm going to click Project. I'm going to click Import. I need to select that JSON file. I've selected the JSON file. You can see it's validated. I'll check the box next to create flight views and click OK. Now you notice on the left hand side I have this job called create flight views. I'll open this up by double clicking on it and I'll right click on the canvas and I'll click revalidate job against my environment. So notice the borders of the components themselves have changed to green and this tells us that these components were successfully configured but I still need to update the database and schema name and um, we're going to use job variables to do this and um, similar to what a concept that we did in the previous lesson as part of this playlist so I'm going to right click on the canvas I'm going to click manage job variables I'm then going to change the job database name to training and the source schema name to public that's everything that we're using for this for in our snowflake environment for this playlist We'll click OK, right click again on the canvas and run the job and we'll check that it's run successfully, which it has and we've essentially created these views. If I look in here, there's our SQL which is creating and replacing the view. It uses the job variables that we've just set, creates the view in the database and it's the same for 2017. Notice that the filter is getting applied here and 2018 with the corresponding filter applied in that view as well. If we come back over to our environments on the left hand side and collapse that one and we look at views, see nothing's in there at the moment. If you right click on our schema and click refresh, now if we expand our views we can see there's our three different views that we've just created. And that's everything that we needed to do in this step. So we don't actually need this job anymore, so we can just delete it. To do that, we can just right click and click delete. It's now done its job and create those views for us. That's what we'll be using in the transformation stage now to feed into our fact table, which will be the subject of our next lesson. Hope you found that useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe. New videos come in very soon, and especially the next one in this playlist you'll be interested in, which is when we create the fact table itself. I also wanted to let you know about our Master and Snowflake program of myself that we run, and it's, it's an exclusive signature program to help you master Snowflake and learn how to design, implement, and scale solutions in the cloud. And I've designed this program specifically for those people who have either scratched the surface using Snowflake or who are stuck working with legacy on-premise technologies and haven't been invested in by their companies and have fallen behind in their career. And what I've done is packaged up my knowledge and experience of working with Snowflake since 2017 and learning how to package up Snowflake's out-of-the-box capabilities in a way where you can apply them in the real world to address common challenges. So this program isn't about theory. Of course, I need to introduce you to the concepts if you're new to Snowflake, and many of my members are, but it's really about introducing the theory and then in practice, how you apply those in the real world. I've been through the pain of understanding what works and what doesn't. Now I've got a formula or a set of recipes, if you like, that show you how to do that. So the Master and Snowflake program includes in-depth, on-demand video course content that I've created they all include practical hands-on demos. I provide access to all the code, templates, and files that I use as part of those demos. So you can download them and use them freely. You may want to use them in your day-to-day -day work. You may want to take them and customize them and use them as a starting point. All members on the program get exclusive access to a members-only group where everybody can help each other out and share their knowledge and best practice and get expert advice. Finally, 
I also carry out a group 60 minute coaching call with all the members, totally optional, where you can ask me anything about Snowflake, data analytics, data strategy, data architecture, you name it, um, interview advice, and I can help you and give my um, input and help and support and guidance around that. Finally, you'll get lifetime access to all future updates. Snowflake's changing and evolving. There's new features and releases every week, and you'll continue to benefit from those updates as well. At a high level, there's 10 modules. This is what we cover, everything ranging from the Snowflake architecture to getting data into Snowflake. And then once you've got data, how do you effectively use it, secure it, share it, and work with it to ensure that you get the maximum value from your Snowflake implementation? If you're interested, I've included the application link in the video description below. If this sounds like the thing that you're looking for and you want to supercharge your career, and if you're ready to take the ultimate step, I'd really encourage you to fill out the application form below.